at this! It's filled halfway with salt! Uh, just looks like a fancy salt holder. Seems like the god of salt was a god lacking in treasures. According to my knowledge, it's no ordinary vessel. Although it is only half full, it is also forever half full. That is to say, it is bottomless. What? You're saying that even if I pour the salt out, the amount inside won't change? Exactly. Able to produce endless salt. The god of salt is powerful indeed. Finally, after all that effort, I've found precious treasure. I claim this is mine. I just need to pour the endless salt into a thousand or ten thousand bags. I can sell it and make a fortune. Hey, how can you use a relic of the god of salt for such a shallow pursuit? If Mr. Clement wants this salt chalice, then the next object we find will belong to Miss Wanyan, according to the contract agreed upon. Of course, as we agreed. <laughs> but how can anything be worth more than this rare find? Since we have a contract, it's no use for me to fight with him. Then let's move on, shall we? <laughs> Just a simple ruler. It doesn't look to be worth anything. This, if I remember correctly, this is some kind of measuring tool. Indeed. But the god of salt imbued it with another power. When you stick this ruler in the ground, the surrounding area will become covered in salt, much like a rising tide covers the earth. The deeper it is stuck in the ground, the more salt will appear. It is essentially a bumper harvest of salt. What? That, that's even better than the salt chalice! Well then, according to our contract, the salt ruler goes to Miss Wanyan. No! Unacceptable! I paid for and organized this entire expedition. Why should I get the short end of the stick? And this girl has been useless! Why would she get anything? So you are saying you want to break the contract? So what if I break it? Now that I've seen how the mechanisms in this ruin work, I no longer need you! Let's not forget who hired who here. Why should I let you make the rules? Because you agreed to a contract. Rex Lapis once said, Ones who break their contracts shall suffer the wrath of the rock. That is one of your Liyue gods. I am from Snezhnaya. I will suffer the wrath of the rock. You may find it rather unpleasant. I shall confiscate your treasure as well. You are not worthy to continue any further into the ruin. Leave this place. Oh, darn you! Just you wait! Clement's wrongdoing stemmed from greed, yes. But besides greed, there are many other things that may tempt us to break contracts. When people see the object of their dreams, how many are really able to control their desire and follow the contract? I think we should be honest with each other now. That in truth, not a single member of this archaeological expedition came here for archaeology. Why do you say that? Miss, you lack even the most basic archaeological knowledge, and can recognize naught but a few simple relics. However, you are an expert when it comes to anything regarding the God of Salt. You aren't interested in archaeology or relics. What you're really interested in is the God of Salt. I believe those legends about the God of Salt that you mentioned on the Pearl Galley are passed down between generations at Yinyuan Hall. Okay, that's enough. Sir, you are indeed a man of great knowledge and talents. I seem to have been right to seek you out once I plucked up my courage. You're right. I'm not a scholar of archaeology. I come from one of the eight trades under the jurisdiction of the Qi Sing, 
Yinyuan Hall of the Salt Industry. Our ancestors were those protected by the God of Salt all those years ago, when the Archon War engulfed the land in chaos. During the war, Morax assassinated our god out of envy for her power. He left us alone and lost in the world. We... we hate him! But this is Morax's Liyue after all. And its history is written as he wishes. So I seek proof of Morax's guilt. He has blood on his hands and cruelty in his heart! <sighs> We agreed to a contract that we will face the truth head on, didn't we, Mr. Zhongli? You must judge this history fairly. Naturally, of course. But I must add, Liu is no longer Morax's Liu. Come with me. All the answers you seek lie ahead. This is... A sword? Aha! Uh -huh. It's a broken sword! This is proof! This proves that the God of Salt had to fight back! Fight back against the evil Morax! But sadly, she was defeated. The power of this sword surely is much greater than that of the Salt Chalice and Salt Ruler. If we can repair the sword, then we can show the world the mighty power of the God of Salt! Two pieces of a broken sword. From an archaeological perspective, these are two separate relics. According to the contract, you can only claim one. B why We were alternating claims to treasure, true. But Clement is no longer here. Yes. But the only one object per claim clause still holds true. You cannot take two relics at the same time. Th this logic! <laughs> when there's a contract, nothing can be allowed to slide. If the contract is not followed, then it is broken. No! If I only take one half, then it can't be repaired, and the power of the God of Salt cannot be restored. No matter what, I must be faithful to her. Even if it breaks the contract, I don't care. So you are already decided? Hmm. Then there is a price to pay for breaking the contract. That is to say, you consign yourself to suffer the wrath of the rock. That... that's okay. The God of Salt gave up her life to protect her people. My sacrifice is nothing compared to that. Punish me however you want. Just let me take this proof of my faith. Perhaps that punishment would be easier for her, but as punishment, I will tell you the truth. Huh? The truth? You mean the truth is my punishment? Yes. The truth that I am about to tell you shall be your price to pay for breaking the contract. I'm afraid to say that the God of Salt, Havria, was not the powerful god you imagine her to be. Rather, she was a small and weak god who yielded to all other gods. When it came to war, she lost, never able to win a seat among the Seven. <gasps> what? During the Archon War, the gods of this world used all their strength and cunning to vie for control of Tevat. But Havria instead chose to flee. She thought that by giving up before a fight could start, she could save herself and her people from the war. However, during such a long war, there is no end to the advances of aggressors. After making countless concessions, Havria lost all of her lands, until only one small haven remained. No. No! It can't be so. In her last days, she had not even a single blade to defend her people with. Not even a single blade? This sword is not a relic belonging to the God of Salt, but is instead 
The murder weapon used to kill her. Murder weapon? No! That's not true! That can't be true! You're trying to test my faith in the God of Salt! As I said before, I only state the facts. Preposterous! You, you are a follower of Morax! Don't try to trick me! It is a punishment after all. I did not want to tell her such cruel facts. But the contract was broken. Let's follow her deeper into the ruin. There, I fear. We will find something that will leave her no choice but to face the truth. What are all these? What did they see? What did they do? What... what happened? Since you do not trust me, let us continue onward. That which lies beyond this door will show you all that happened back then. This is the scene of the crime. Havria's body dissipated, leaving nothing but these traces of salt. Her dying moments have since been frozen in time to this very day. <sighs> the story continues that some among her people realized at last that this gentle, kind, but weak god could never protect anyone in wartime. The Archon War was cruel in the extreme. Instead of consigning her to the agony of defeat, they thought perhaps it would be better to give her a quick release. No matter how weak the god, the power that flows forth when they are slain is beyond the strength of mortal coils to bear. Those who could not flee were thus transformed. Those of her people who were untouched by this disaster left for Lyua, where they sought refuge with Rex Lapis. Their descendants feared Havria's remnants and lived in terror that she had laid upon them an eternal curse. So they risked their lives to come here, to break the sword and offer up obeisances in hopes that her anger might be appeased. But they need not have done so. For how could a god who had never once resisted, even till the end, nurse hatred for her people in her heart? Uh, I... Even if this is so, I can't! This must be a lie. A false history, all of it! Don't you dare try to shake my faith! This is the price she must pay. Yet I would not call it a bad thing. Judging by how she appeared, I fear that she will struggle for a time. But even if she may not escape that struggle immediately, simply recognizing the truth is good enough for now. Indeed, in ages past, Havria's story served as a warning to me as well. Faith in a god who has already passed will do you no good. So it is for Havria. And so it is for Morax also. All right then. Now, would you like to accompany me in taking a trip to Guyan Stone Forest? <sighs> Treading old ground. Telling old stories. One cannot help but be reminded of old acquaintances.